Okay, back to um, objects falling with air resistance, part two. Okay, so where we were on this was uh, we were right here. And um, if you remember, um, I started out with Newton's second law, A equals F net, F net over M. And um, I changed the A to dV dt. And um, just rearrange this a little bit. So divided both terms by M. And then um, I separated my terms. So I got my V term with my dV and I brought the dt um, over there. And then I, I did that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate this. And when I integrate this, the dt goes to just t. And I'm ready to do integration by substitution here. So I'm saying let u equal to this. But when I do that, I have to change the dv to du because I can't just take the integral of u with respect to v. I got to do it with respect to du. And so to get du, dv in terms of du, you take the derivative of u with respect to v. Now the derivative of u with respect to v is, this is zero because that's a constant. And so this is like v to the first power. And so that just is going to be um, negative b over m. So I can solve for dv, take solve for that term. So I solve for that term. And then I bring that term over here. And I plug into that. Okay, so what that does is um, what I get when I do that then is I'm going to get negative m over b times du all over u. That's equal to t. Now I should also put my limits, I should put these, these um, limits in terms of u and not v. Um, but I, I'm going to switch this back when I get done taking this anyways. I'm going to switch it back. So I, I'm not going to do that. I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to um, go ahead and take this integral then. The integral is the natural log of u. But that would be the natural log of u, and this is u. There you are. And then um, we'll integrate from 0 to v. And um, I'm sorry, this was a v. That's what u is. OK, so and that's equal to t. OK, so let me uh, let me sub in then the. Oh, wait, hang on. There's a negative negative m over b here because I pulled that out of the integral. Let me get that out of the way. Let me move that over to this side. So I'm going to get um, negative b over m times t. That's equal to, and on this side, it's going to be, if I substitute in, the natural log of g over bm times v minus, now when you put in zero, it doesn't go away. It actually, just this term goes away. So I get the natural log of g. All right, so um, I can simplify that a little bit. So negative b over m times t is equal to, this is the same thing as the natural log of g minus b over mv all over g. Okay, now um, if this equals that, remember we're trying to get v all, all alone on one side. We're trying to solve for v. And so <clears throat> the way you can do it is you say if this equals this, then e to the raised to this has to equal e raised to this stuff. Oh boy, this is going to get messy. I'm just rewriting all this, all this stuff. So Okay, so that's e raised to all that stuff. And I did that because now these are going, the, the e is an inverse to the natural log. And so um, that just goes to this. That gets rid of that natural log. And so I'm just left with that this is um, e to the negative b over mt is equal to um, G minus B over M V all over G. So I'm getting closer. I know this is taking a while, but 
Uh, so then bring this G over to the other side. And, um, and I'm left with this. And maybe I'll switch this term over here and I'll bring this term over there. So I get um, B over MV times V is equal to G minus G E to the negative B over MT. Okay, and maybe I'll divide through by um, M over B. So V is equal to MG over B minus mg over b e to the negative b over m times t perfect perfect hey um, i'm feeling pretty good about this because you see that this is our terminal velocity when mg when mg equals bv then we're at terminal velocity and so v terminal is mg over b and so this is v terminal and so if I were going to graph this equation, it's taking a constant. What you do, think of this as you're taking a constant, mg over b, v terminal, and you're subtracting um, something that's going to decay with time. So at t equals 0, this is 1. This whole thing becomes 1. So I'm subtracting from mg over b, I'm subtracting um, 1 times mg over b. That's 0. But as time goes on, this term decays, which means this whole thing decays. So this grows to that. Okay, so that is the velocity. That's how the velocity changes with time. Now, if you want to know how the acceleration changes with time, then you just take the derivative of v with respect to t. So if that this is v... Uh, if that's v, then a is the derivative of v with respect to time. So take the derivative of this, and uh, the derivative of a constant is 0. And the derivative of this is, um, let's see, b over m times m over b. The two negatives cancel one another out. G e to the negative b over m t. Well, you see that mathematically these cancel, and so a is g e over b or e to the negative b over m t. Okay, so that's the acceleration. Incidentally, this math is good for low speeds. For high speeds, it turns out that the the force due to air resistance is more closely approximated for high speeds. The force of air resistance is more closely approximated by negative B V squared. So the, the, um, the force really picks up like the force gets greater. Like when, when you're going real, when you're going fast, the force it's, it gets a lot greater. Okay. I'm not going to solve this next one, but I'm going to tell you how to get x versus t. If you want to know how to get x versus t, or how, to, how, how the position changes with time, then um, this is what you do. It, you say dx dt, that's what the v is, it's this, is equal to mg over b minus mg over b e to the negative b over m times t. And then uh, you can take this dt on the other side. So dx is equal to mg over b minus mg over b e to the negative b over mt dt. And then I'm going to integrate both sides. And let's say that um, it starts at 0 and goes to some time t. And this is at t equals 0. See dt, so this would be t equals 0. This is, and so, and some other time x. So if you integrate this, which it may look like a pain to integrate, but this is just a constant. And integrating e at e function is pretty easy too. All right, so good luck. Hope this made sense. All right, bye.